Well, we're back. And uh, sorry for the delay last week. We didn't uh, didn't end up streaming last week, so we're finally back at it. Had kind of a busy one and a lot going on right now. Um, so I wasn't able to get back to streaming last week, but welcome back uh, to Art Stream with Trey Gallagher. And this is episode six, which is a continuation um, from episode th three, which was the beginning of this creature design, of which we've been working up a cat-like creature taking inspiration from the big cats lions jaguars well and even to some degree smaller cats and that their anatomies share a lot of similar features and basic construction so um, we had started with this drawing here which was looking at some basic cat reference, a couple different cat reference skeletons, and sort of doing a, a hodgepodge collection of them kind of put together. Um, and nailing down really what is the overall proportions of bones and skeletal structures. It was after completing this that we moved to taking that skull from this drawing, which at the time was a little bit a little bit different than this. And it was actually face straight on. And we went back into constructing a basic skull that looked something like this. So stepping away from the body but figuring out the structures of the head, thinking that maybe getting the head structures first and working back towards the body second. Sometimes this works in reverse. Sometimes you can do the body first and then figure out the head. But many times since we look at creatures in their faces first for some sign of life or expression or emotion, um, starting with the head can be a big inspiration. I know I do this a lot with uh, character design. Um, specifically when I'm working more in a simplified style, tune style, I like to start with the head and then work my way towards the body. I work that way in my classes as well that I teach on character design. We start with the head. There's many ways to start, but starting with the head can be um, determine a lot of things for you. So after getting the skull down, I proceeded to working up this sketch last time in episode five. So beginning to get a feel for something that feels somewhat cat-like, maybe somewhat dog-like, a little bit of features of both, but working mostly with cat-like structures and then building out from there. In addition to the uh, front and side view, also built a three-quarter view skull the same structure and then of course took the design in combination with the front and side to be able to see how all three of these start fitting together. So now looking at this I am ready to take a basic head design that I have working here which is not finalized but structurally it's in place. I think I have some of the basic forms there that now I want to take this into what the body might look like, three-quarter view, side view, back onto our original structure of a cat-like skeletal system. So what would this creature's body look like on this kind of a skeleton? Now already I'm beginning to see that there are some scale differences happening between here. In other words, this drawing is incorporating a neck size that is much huskier and thicker 
And I may keep that or I may thin it out a bit. But when I look at this head structure on this body, this seems to me to be perhaps a slightly or finer boned animal than what I'm seeing here. This has more weight, more solid heaviness and overall scale to it. So I think what I'll end up doing is still working with this as a base under drawing, but I'm not bound to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this drawing and my other views right here off screen where I'm gonna to continue to look at them as reference as I'm working and then begin to draw here with my overlay. And, you know, I may do one uh, this evening, but if I don't like it or if I need think it needs a second draft, I could always work up another version. And that's the beauty of, you know, working in a somewhat of a layering system. This could be done digitally equally as well. And I've done things like this exactly digitally. But there's also something very tangible about drawing with raw materials, natural medium on paper that sort of, for me, begins to make this thing feel more alive, at least in this stage. And once I have it realized, then I can begin to take it into other mediums and graphically represent it in whatever medium or style that I want to. But right now there's something tactile. I really like working this way with my hands, with natural material, and being able to put down what feels right. I don't know that it always translates the same exactly working digitally, but I enjoy working this way also. And I think whatever means gets you the results that you're needing to get is what we're after here. So um, just kind of double checking here with my paper and making sure that I'm kind of staying within the viewable area. I am going to begin to start sketching in over the top and we'll see what we get. If you're returning and this is uh, not your first time to uh, art stream with Trey Gallagher, welcome back. If this is your first time with us, uh, welcome. Um, this stream seems to be a bit irregular. Um, we're now on our sixth episode, and I have not fully been able to lock in an exact time to be able to do this regularly, but I'm aiming usually for once a week, sometime either Friday night, Saturday night, or Sunday night, and so far it has been Sunday nights. just seems to be the only time right now where I can really get away and get this streaming done. Things are very busy for me. Um, Lately, uh, things at the school that I have been teaching at for the past 15 years um, has decided to close its doors. Um, a long sordid tale, but it will mean big changes uh, for myself and uh, my family and uh, my lifestyle as an artist um, to suddenly be looking for work again in both academia and in industry and so my life's been a little bit upside down and I've been out there um, starting my search for my next home and where that will be but the nice part is I guess if you're following this art stream that this will always be a home regardless of where I may be working elsewhere I will always be here so you can always tune in here and check out and see what I'm up to and figure out what we're going to be covering and designing and creating what fun adventures we're going to go on here. Again, this art stream was mostly created for me as a means of being able to show how I create outside of the classroom um, as a professional and as a creative person some of the methods that I do and just doing what I do without so much instruction. When I teach I oftentimes don't get 
to um, just stop and create. I oftentimes just don't get that. Too much critiquing and feedback, which is part of being a great teacher, but I oftentimes don't get to just do what I do. So in this particular case, this is a chance for me to just do what I do and let you watch. And if you're a student of mine out there, um, you may see some things that I talk about in school. You may see some things I don't talk about. But either way, this is a place for me just to do what I do without worrying too much about class structure, etc. So hopefully it also becomes a bit of a learning situation. And I hope that you can get something out of this. So I'm going to start off by, you know, I'm looking at my own drawing that I have now created around that skull, and I'm beginning to think a little bit about how is that going to look on this drawing down below, starting with what I know. I've also not completely decided to figure out what the markings are yet, but kind of thinking a little bit about the idea that maybe the markings might might change in terms of like camouflage or stripes or anything like that. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to go with, although I have some ideas for sure, just even looking at my initial initial concept sketch. So yeah, so I apologize for last week not getting to stream, but uh, I'm hoping to continue on with a regular streaming schedule and moving towards what looks like Sundays. So if you are out there and you are interested in checking back in, looks like for a while at least Sundays will be the regular meetup time for this stream. Looking for some of those structures around the around the eye. Staying pretty loose at this point. Watching for overall proportion. It's kind of interesting, you know, as I put a bit more hair structures on this creature, the, the cat-like proportions start to turn into what feel more like dog proportions. Kind of interesting. Um, both being quadrupeds. Cats being bigger, but the big cats being bigger. But I think there's a lot of overlapping there. And the more hairy you make a cat, the more it does look a little bit like a dog. It wasn't really my intention, but I did like the idea of it perhaps being a bit hairier. But again, I, this might be a design that I decide not to stay with, but we'll see. We'll, I'll keep working with it here. So we're looking at a neck. And if I really wanted to take this the next step further 
I suppose I would begin to do some muscle studies. But I'm not sure I want to go quite that far. I still want this to be concept influence and just having fun with it and seeing what I can invent without having to explain everything in detail. It's just a concept. This is just one way to start. Um, and there's many ways to start. send out a little share here to invite some friends And a little bit of an invite out. See if anybody wants to join us. A little bit of the rib cage here coming back up underneath. Of course, Just getting my basic position. I originally did this foot, I think I had this foot a little bit too far back. So one of the things I went back and fixed a little bit was the position of this foot to be a little bit closer. <clears throat> There's also a bit of bend here. So this, this elbow is a bit low.
So this foot needed to be a little bit closer to the foreground. It's interesting, you know, this foot seems to be a little bit kind of pensive. Um, a little cautious, maybe. I think this is gonna be a little bit a little bit wider over here. I think that arm's gonna come up through there, and I think we're gonna have the chest come in front of there, so you have the bicep extensors, extensor group, flexors. And then the tricep is probably going to be back up over here. And I, I've got my scapula somewhere back up in there. And I'm assuming there's like a little kind of fur line working a little bit through there. So I don't know. We'll see how. some claws, some talons. And that chest line running back up right here. Quadriceps front of the knee. back here we've got the um, hamstrings coming around back of the leg and this this animal is definitely kind of crouching here so that could be prowling or maybe it's pensive about seeing something it's a bit skittish maybe that would kind of give it a little bit of a mystical quality that it's kind of hunted or sought after and that it's a little bit endangered or maybe not quite as aggressive but maybe it's it's pensive got some claws here is the back of the foot Our rib cage is there, our belly's here. So we got sort of a little bit of a sign of the scapula. I'm gonna do away with this. Coming down the back of the neck. I like this idea of kind of scruff on its spine. Maybe the shoulder's gotta come up a little bit higher.
peak, the lumbar, which we start to come back down, and then of course the tail. Okay, so some basic proportions worked out with the idea that all of this is in flex, in flux I should say, and could change. to come lower and then maybe the scapula comes up a little might be also something else to think about here too is maybe these ears need to be more It's more alert. I think over here I drew the ears more relaxed, more laid back, but I'm thinking that if these ears come up a little bit more in the upright position, they're going to sort of turn forward from back. They're going to kind of come up forward to actually listen a little bit closer to things that might be coming in the horizon. So I think. Rather than relax, maybe I'll try them up a little bit. Let's see what that looks like.
and checking back against concept. So we're sort of looking here, and there's something here. This definitely feels huskier. So I might need to widen the other shoulder. The thing here is though, this arm is kind of forward and this arm's kind of back, so that's pulling the chest away. So this arm is really sort of back. It's turning almost away from us a little bit. So I think that other leg's gonna be farther out and kind of disappear. Um, but perhaps this neck gets a little thicker. This ear would come up here. A little bit of a hair. Kind of coming back. Sort of a center line running. pelvis coming through back down here from the shoulder there. It's in front. And then bring out the whiskers maybe a little bit. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. I like that. A little bit of the whiskers, maybe they come out almost like a mustache. Digging the way that that's looking. <clears throat> A little bit of the tooth. 
kind of coming out. I feel like maybe the nose needs to be a little bit heftier. bit of tufts here and then maybe just maybe it's slightly scared and that's why the tufts are coming up I feel like the backs of the legs a little bit of that kind of wise look to him. bit of the main hair here, the backs of the arms a little bit. maybe this scapula needs to come up a little higher now remember I don't I don't have to stick to the bones the bones don't have to determine everything by law the bones the point of the skeletal structure was to be a, a, a point of departure so at some point if those bones don't match up with to make this pose right I am not stuck to that. I am not stuck to that. So if he needs to be a little tougher looking, a little thicker looking, I'm all right with that. And I'm kind of thinking this chest is a little low, so I'm going to bring this bring this up a little bit closer to the chest. This elbow might be a little, a little bit lower. And maybe these legs are a little too skinny. So 
interesting because he's kind of hairy, but but then in some areas not really. I'm kind of thinking maybe the maybe it'd be a little little um, maybe this tail is a little bit more like a lion's tail, like maybe a little. I kind of like the idea that this tail is short hair, but then maybe gets a little scruffier towards the end. It definitely has some parts that are a little scruffier. Backs of the legs, little bits of hairiness, a little bit of high points of the bones, shoulder blades, back of the neck. to start a little farther in. Give more width to the cheekbone. His eyes have an element of looking very wise. Maybe kind of the cat eye, I guess. People like to call that the cat eye. Cat eyes, I guess, feel kind of wise. Maybe. A feeling they're kind of maybe looking into your soul but I kind of like this idea that the cheekbone is kind of working its way right here. So there's a little bit of that sort of almost outlining the eye there. A little bit of hair around the edge of the jawline. Then it gets narrow again. A little bit of hair around the the muzzle. does have this kind of wolf but with a little bit of a cat quality to it there. These kind of hair 
carry points. Put herring around the edges. Don't want to bring that down too low. jaw down just a little bit. Here it kind of comes down here. There's the jaw, edge of the neck, back of the ear. Man, it's almost like a weird cat now. A little bit of a weird cat. chest, deltoid sort of here in front, pectoralis chest, and then a bit of a sternomastoid on the other side running here. That's good. A little scruffiness around the shoulder blade. Smoother as we run towards the back. Back of the legs, get a little bit of the into the tops of the, the feet, get a little bit more woolly. I think I'm just about ready to maybe try a little bit of uh, light and shadow, denote a little bit of ground, bring out a little bit of drop the slade back a little bit in silhouette. a little bit of like a couple things in it snow leopard maybe ocelot I don't, know, that's what... I don't think ocelots are long here I'll have to do a little little checking on that one
almost like ocelots do not have long hair. They're almost like a small scale jaguar. Ooh, long legs though. Interesting. Like a little chest hair here. This thing's kind of scruffy. chest hair shadow there. Oh, I'm kind of digging it. So I also like the idea that maybe it's got a little bit of I don't know. Um, wolf or kind of the grayness of a uh, of a wolf, gray wolf, but maybe just like a little bit of the markings of like a a tabby, <clears throat> your sort of gray tabby meets wolf. These ears are definitely starting to look more pointy, perhaps more cat-like or more uh, wolf-like. What if I made those fangs a little longer? So it looks like uh, your tabby here is a little bit of some sort of don't want to really go with tiger, so we got to be a little careful of that. I also kind of like this idea of a little bit of the markings working around the eye like this. I like that. You're not seeing it a whole lot here yet, but maybe it, the markings sort of wrap. He's, he's more in the bushier kind of fur, but I still want to be able to see some sort of
some sort of pattern. Kind of wrap in this way. Just a little bit of this kind of back and forth. A little bit this way, a little bit that way. A little bit of coming over the top. So, scruffy, but not uncool. <laughs> so I think somewhere in here, we've got to have scruffy, but certain places lays very flat and angular so if there's if it's scruff it's intentional uh, maybe the hair kind of comes up there then we get a little dimension we get some hair tufts here boom 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 back this way but then this kind of lays a little smoother. in front of the ear right there. Kind of smooth skin. So where is it smooth? Where is it hairy? Well, probably smooth on the front side. A little bit hairier on the back. Claws. Smooth, mostly on the front side, a bit hairier on the back. Maybe a little hair around the knees, elbows. 
How hairy is too hairy? That is the question. Too hair and too not to hair. <laughs> it's late. I apologize. If you're out there drawing with me. I hope I'm not putting you to sleep. Um, kind of digging it. I like his. I like the angle, the angles here. So this sort of swoop, and then it's kind of smooth, and then swoop, and then it's kind of smooth. Definitely kind of toggles back and forth between that kind of cat meets dog. But I think that this frame, the way he's walking is definitely more like a cat than a dog. There's more of a sneaking up, maybe going to pounce. Areas of cat, areas of hairiness like a dog or a wolf, but not a wolf. This is definitely a cat's frame. You can tell that just by the stance. This is, a dog's legs are slightly different proportion. Dogs don't kind of crouch. I think like this, this definitely is. Definitely a little bit more like a cat. You know, this might be worth um, a quick silhouette study just to see how that works, if it needs anything. I think I might just do that. Just a quick, quick look. I'm curious to know, silhouette-wise, how we're working. So I'm going to pull out real quick sheet of marker paper to go back right over the top because I think that you know in a good design silhouette two-dimensional read is definitely essential it's the first kind of read that most people get on anything that we look at is it's two-dimensional information so I'm gonna drop back real quick and do a silhouette study. So you need a good chunky black marker for something like this. So I am going with um, Copic. And I'm gonna stick as close as I can to what I am seeing. Gets a little tricky in here, some of this information, but I think I think I'll be able to mostly tell what's going on here. Hmm. 
again I'm I'm working on um, Copic marker paper I'm sorry not on the Copic marker paper but on marker paper so the idea is it's not gonna bleed Check against the wind. Just in case, as I fill this out, I'm going to pull this out here. And I got an extra sheet of paper. Just in case. I'm going to go ahead and fill most of this in. Getting a little bit of bleed through, but it's all right. So I worked on an extra backup sheet of paper just to make sure.
liking it. The stance is definitely cat-like. Even though it's got some elements that feel like a wolf, this is definitely a cat's stance. So I think that, uh, that the cautiousness, the bending in the legs are all part of what feel like the cat. The way the cat is cautious, tiptoes. doesn't feel quite right. I'm kind of thinking there's something about these hindquarters that may need to get a little bit different proportion, a little thicker maybe. Quick silhouette check definitely can tell us a lot. All right. So, what do we got here? we doing? There may, might be a little bit of a thickness there. I'm wondering. That belly looks like it may need to a little lower. I think that chest might need to come back a little bit this way. So I'm going to shave off a little bit of this Silhouette. Good old classic whiteout. And I think this this chest is a little
That feels better. I think that this chest should not come up so high. I think this chest needs to come more across. So a little up here and a little more across there. And maybe a little narrower on that neck, a little higher up in here. It feels like the head and the neck are a little large for the rest of the body. So I think maybe, maybe we come down in the thickness of the neck just a little bit. Let's go up a little bit and see what happens. that to be sure but I think that neck needs to come down maybe the back of the neck needs to come down too a little bit I've got hair there but I don't know that it's this this thick either hey Welcome. What's up, Half Slab? Where are you chiming in from? A little lower on the belly, a little narrower on the neck. Still lacking the shoulder blades. So we're working on this creature design tonight. It's actually the fourth installment of uh, the build on this. We started with a skeletal structure of uh, working with felines and now we're sort of concepting over the top. Got a little bit of a rough pencil going and uh, doing a quick silhouette check. You guys up to tonight? Where are you uh, coming in from? I'm always curious to know where people are listening from, especially at this ungodly hour. <laughs> it's like after one here. AM. I think that's about it. go ahead and put uh, Kansas City <laughs> you're up with me then us, us night owls actually truth be told I'm up this late because the only time I can really stream with any peace is after the kid is in bed <laughs> so us, uh, us art dads Do it in the after hours. Kansas City.
great town. All right, so looking now at my um, my silhouette test, I'm kind of really seeing that I think there's a few areas that need a little bit of patch up. So this is really, this was helpful. This is giving me some more information. I think I need to come down a little bit on the neck. And then, uh, we're going to level out the belly a little bit here instead of coming back up so high I think we might bring it more across so we're kind of thinking of it more like this I might still have a little bit of that kick back and, and it might be that the the quads are a little bit high still, but that's okay because some of this is the hairline. Like this kind of thing is sort of the line dividing between the rib cage and the soft part of the belly and the abdomen. So there's a little bit of sort of a fur line here, but the actual joint is connecting a little bit higher and that's indicated by this slight turn here. So, but that, this feels pretty good to me. This feels pretty cat-like. These sort of curves in the legs. So I feel okay with those. But I do think that this coming across to the belly is a little bit better. And then up on the shoulders, that's good. A powerful neck. But not too high either, so that was good. And then I think maybe just a little higher up here. Yeah, well, it's funny. Thanks for the thanks for the feedback on the head. Um, in case you didn't catch one of the earlier episodes, and you can you can check them out. I'm not sure if they're on Twitch anymore, or if they're now over to my YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel which you can check me out at um, Trey Gallagher on YouTube, but. The videos that sort of led up to this just kind of shows you where we, we came from, since you're asking. This was a little bit of the concept of the head that was done first, kind of moving into the body. So first we kind of figured out the head. And then we moved into taking this design for basic head construction into the body. Like what did that head look like on this body? So that's a little bit where we come from. That's probably why the head looks a little bit better. <laughs> we spent a little more time on the head and, and, and what you're seeing is this design put over here. But if you wanna see this one, by the way, you can check out episode five, um, which I think might still be on Twitch through tonight or tomorrow. It's been up for a couple, a week or two. Um, but then if you go to YouTube, I have it there also. That's Trey Gallagher um, on YouTube. So you can, uh, check me out and watch episode four where we did this anyway so yeah that's where we're coming from and probably why the head feels a little more resolved because we did yeah we spent some time on it well i'm glad you like thanks for the feedback i appreciate it it's been a little quiet out here tonight so sometimes you wonder if you're if anyone's out there but it doesn't it doesn't help to be streaming at middle of the night either. <laughs> so Kansas City, what are you doing up this hour? <laughs> or are you getting up in the morning? Is it morning? You're two hours ahead of us, yeah, so it's three. Are you up or did you stay up or did you get up? <laughs> Let's see. Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. 
That's a great blues and jazz town, man. My favorite Charlie Parker riffs about Kansas City. Nice, what do you do? Half slab? Do you do art? You do games? A little of both? And do you find that Twitch is best for watching the game stuff? Or what do you like about Twitch? Definitely some hair on the tops of the feet. All right, guys, I think I am going to throw a little bit of marker on this puppy give it some form some definition and maybe a suggestion of some stripes or some patterning and then I think I'm gonna call this one for tonight what you got here half slab hey that's awesome That's awesome. Hey, thanks thanks for supporting the arts and you know what? I I bet you do good stuff. I don't know if you're doing it on uh Twitch, but um why not? Why not? This Twitch thing's pretty cool. I'm a teacher. I I teach in a game design and animation program. So I teach a lot of this kind of thing during my day and part of the reason I started this was just to be able to be left alone to do my own stuff, but demonstrate it too. But I have to say, um, once some initial setup and it's pretty easy to do. And I've met a lot of people out here, so it's kind of cool. What kind of art do you do? Do you like drawing, painting, sculpting, journaling? <clears throat> People like to do all kinds of great things. <clears throat> all right, uh, just so you're all with me here, I'm gonna step up and do some marker work now. I'm gonna go with some of my Copics. I like to use Copics, mostly for the refillable, sort of uh, better for the environment kind of quality of them. They also mark pretty well and come in a variety of tips. I'm going with the uh, Copic Sketch, which has the one end is the chisel tip and the one end is the brush tip. I'm going to start in with something uh, really light to get started, and then I'll continue to build some, some shadow. And I'll probably lighten some lines here as I go. I'm gonna to try to build a little sense of light and shadow, get some dimensional qualities on this, this cat. <clears throat> Again, I'm kind of picturing something grayish, but, um, or maybe I could go something really weird and do blue, but I'm not going to color at this point. This is just going to be about value. So I'm going to just kind of start in with establishing light and shadow. 
um, generally where the, the major shadows are. Um, I'm going in with a warm gray. Just a little sense of major lights and lights and shadows. The thing to remember about markers, they generally um, go on a little lighter, or what, I'm sorry, darker than what they will end up. But just in case, it's you're basically working in a transparent medium, so you want to think of it as you're working transparently and you're layering darker and darker and darker and preserving anything that you might need to keep as light. One other thing you need to be a little cautious of that's kind of happening here, I don't know if you're you're noticing it, but um, there it's mixing a little bit with my graphite so that is making it um, come across a little bit darker. So if I were purely on marker with nothing else, then it probably would be a little bit lighter, but um, it's mixing with a little bit of the graphite that's there, and that's fine. So Half Slab, you were telling me, what do you like to do? You are saying uh, Sharpies and pencils? Cool. You got any subject matter, thing that you like to draw the most like the fantasy stuff kind of storytelling you know I love storytelling that's really the basis of what got me into art um, when I was a kid playing D&D &D, role playing games and my brother and I used to draw all kinds of stuff. Cars and anything that we were kind of into. But it was always about sort of creating something new or imagining something that I had been picturing in my head. And I think that was always the fun was to, to try to make it seem possible or believable. So that it meant a degree of, you know, realism which not everybody creates in that way, and I get that. But I think for me, when I started drawing, it was to bring things to life that I was imagining and to make it seem possible, like that whole concept. Being a kid who kind of grew up in the 70s and 80s, we grew up with books that did a lot of fantasy. We didn't have as much of the fantasy genre yet, in film, etc. So it was a lot of books, a lot of games, role playing, comics. Today, stuff people have is available. <laughs> it's like, and if you can imagine it, somebody's probably either already done it or they're making a movie of it right now. So it's it's pretty amazing. But um, I don't know. If I grew up now, I don't know if if the drive to to want to bring imagine if the imagination would be as strong or as desired to want to bring stuff that's in your head out probably but we just didn't have as much um, available to us so it was all about bringing that stuff out to see it but um that's what got me started Well, that's great I mean that's sketchbooks are great for that you know working in your sketchbook and just kind of letting ideas come out starting with a doodle that's perfectly legit you know I, I teach my students that they need to they need to keep a journal and just let whatever's in their mind come out and sometimes you don't have a whole lot and so you start with something that's just a mark and you build on it and you build on it and it turns into something and that's when doing that, and I do that too occasionally, I just kind of start with nothing and just see what comes out. It's fun because t to think that you could sit down 
and half an hour later there's going to be something there that you never could have imagined before um that's power that's amazing so i think that's legit you collect the pokemon in any other uh, traded car trading cards or what kind of games do you play yeah i play a little bit of uh, video games but for the most part I like stuff that uses more of my imagination. So I always tell my students, at some point, you can't play games if you want to make games. <laughs> I mean, you have to kind of be aware of what's out there, but it, it's really hard to do both since they both take so much time. Okay, so I've gotten kind of some basic shadow going here. So now let's see. What would we do for stripes? So I'm using a 10% warm gray I might switch to something even lighter until I figure out exactly what I want I do there is <laughs> there is a zero I suppose you could use um, another one I use when I'm not using a w1 is to go with a pearl white which is sort of a warm white but it, it's not bright white so it'll give it a little tone but without committing too much too much to it so it'll give it keep it on the warm spectrum but give it a little bit of I think I was kind of thinking that around the eye that there would be some sort of markings that would go around the eye. But then I've got this kind of tabby sort of alley cat markings. I don't I don't want too much like tiger Tiger markings, nothing that. Oh yeah, the Fallout 4, definitely. Do you like the Uncharted stuff too? Do you like the sort of epic cultural temples and... Indiana Jones kind of exploration thing. I love that. Bringing those environments to life is pretty cool. I'm coming in with a few few stripes here. A little bit more tone along the back. Yeah, the whole Uncharted thing is is pretty amazing. Um, just the sort of like exploration of ancient civilizations. I mean, it's basically kind of indie, right? It's kind of Indiana Jones, but but with sort of more of a modern, I don't know, spy kind of um, quality to it. A little more hip than indie. Indie's a little bit kind of old-fashioned academic guy where uh, Drake is a little bit more sort of like rogue 
rogue spy. <laughs> I don't know. I might not be giving him the best definition, but um, same principle though. The, the idea that he's traveling to parts of the world, treasure hunting and looking for clues to solving something that involves history. Um, that's cool. And it's sort of excuses to explore stuff. I think the uh, Assassin's Creed stuff is is pretty solid too, and I love how they use history as a way to um, create environments and even actually explain some history. You know, not that they're one hundred percent accurate, but they they go to great lengths to get those games to be to feel accurate. So even if they choose to tell a little bit of a different story than real life, they get a lot of the facts right. And it's neat to be able to like go back in time and maybe be present at some sort of important event or All right, getting maybe a little tiger-like wasn't exactly my goal. Um, so I'm not sure if I would stay with this pattern, but it gives me some, some clue of, some idea of what I might do. Again, as I stated sort of in the beginning here, that working this way, this is just one overlay draw. It doesn't have to be the one I'm going to stay with. Um, it's just one concept of this. We could go back to doing another version of this and then seeing how that rotates into this, but for now, this is one execution. Um, half slab, what you have to? Let's see. Yeah, Assassin's Creed, man. They do a great job. But again, all that period history, and they get it right. They get it right, um, which makes it more believable and more amazing, more interesting, that you're going to a time and a place where that might have been, you could really feel what it was like. That That is interesting to me. I've always been interested in history and time and being able to, go back <laughs> and see how it was in fact I, I have to admit as a fan of the Assassin's Creed uh, games I'm very curious to see where they're going to go next I think the last one that I really you know played through a bit was um, what came after Black Flag it was the one that had the whole um, Jack the Ripper kind of thing going on in Victorian England and London. That was pretty sweet. Although that's not how I would have imagined that the story would have gone, but still. <laughs> it was neat to go back and pretty terrifying at the same time. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's the thing about, you know, concepting ideas is that you try one, if you like it, cool. If you don't, you go back, change it, try something different. I mean, eventually you can come up with something that, that you think is the best solution or your best solution. But truthfully, you know, when you do concept work, um, it's not really about what you think is the best anyway. It's more like giving your client choices. What is it that they want to see that they like? And um, and letting them choose what they're after. Letting them tell you when they think they have found it. Rather than, you know, saying this is the answer. It's really about letting your client choose. So you just, okay, you want more versions? Let's do it. You want another, want another example? Let's do some more. There's going to be a little bit of color maybe around his stash here. Yeah. 
and his, his goat. Maybe a little bit more color on the tufts of his, his fur. All right, a few more touch-ups here. Yeah, what? Well, I'm with you. I mean, I, Black Flag was really one of my favorites. Uh, Assassin's Creed 2 was really good too, but I don't know. For me, I have a soft spot in my heart for <laughs> for the pirate thing. So for me, I I love pirates and anything pirates. <laughs> I've always been loved pirates since I was a a child, and I was forced to go on Pirates of the Caribbean too young. <laughs> I was. I was taken on that ride when I was four years old, and uh, it terrified the crap out of me. But I've also had a love affair with pirates ever since. So yeah, Black Flag was pretty sweet. So I'm darkening in my shadows a little bit. Um, you know, one thing I'm always telling people about shading and things like that, your form shadow should always be darker than your cast shadow. So you can kind of see here that this would be your cast shadow on the ground, right? Um, but your form shadow, the shadows that are defining the form, need to be darker than your cast shadow. So I'm kind of coming back in now. Now I'm with a 20% and I'm darkening my form shadows a bit more. Also, another thing to kind of keep in mind, um, things get darker as they go away. So, uh, I'm sorry. Things are more contrasty the closer they are to you, and they get atmospherically um, obstructed. So, things are not as contrasty when they're farther away. So, for instance, this leg in front of this leg, I would probably make this shadow darker here because it's closer to me than the foot behind it, even if it's just a little bit. Um, that that will sort of help make this foot look closer. Same with the arm and anything else. Gives it just a little bit. bit of form shadow there behind the leg a little bit of shadow there probably a little bit underneath behind the jaw here behind the ears darkening the eyes just a little bit here a little bit of the nostrils I probably need to go into the nostrils with something a lot darker I probably could really edge this thing out with a little bit of a darker line. Alright. Uh, the art side. Um, I don't do coding. Um, I have tremendous respect for people that do the coding, <laughs> but I'm a visual designer. So for me, it's, um, it's about telling stories and world building and coming up with the concepts. And, uh, yeah, I don't do the coding. Although I know that coding is becoming an increasingly higher demand, um, from your average game designer needs to begin to know more and more about that stuff. Um, 
definitely makes it challenging. You know, a lot of my students, they work so hard at, at just understanding design process and then then they got to learn how to code too. I mean, it's amazing how much, um, you know, your average designer has to know. But no, to answer your question, not much on the coding side for me. Do you do coding? Half slab, do you do uh you do coding or you do any programming? All right, I think last I'll come in with a little bit of a Thirty percent gray. Bring things up just a smidge. Yeah, if you know some of that coding shit, it it's a real plus. <laughs> it's a real plus. So before doing any more detailing, I'm going to hit just a couple of shadows here. Definitely want to get a few of these claws to pop just a little bit. So I'm going in with 50% now. Just to get a little more pop. Emphasize my forms just a smidge.
just in a few places. Well, I think we're almost done here, folks. I'm going to throw down just a little bit of shadow here, ground shadow. Just going to push out a little bit. I kind of laid down a little bit of that stuff before, but I'm going to thicken it. A little suggestion of the, the tail hitting. Just widening it a little bit. A little bit more tone along the back, but I want those stripes to pop. It looks like I'm uh, I'm streaming. <laughs> I have been very inconsistent, to be honest with you. Um, thanks for asking, um, but <laughs> if I had to just give you a time, it would probably be this time next week <laughs> I've been trying to get on a regular schedule but like you heard me saying before I'm a dad so I can do this depending if my kid goes to bed or not and if my kid doesn't go to bed early enough it gets really hard so that's why I end up doing this at this godforsaken hour but yeah it's looking like Sunday nights Sunday nights is gonna be the time when I'll probably be coming on mostly it's looking like probably sometime after 10 10 o'clock, maybe 9 if I can get in earlier. But, uh, yeah, dad duty makes it very tough these days. So, yeah, Sundays. I was trying Fridays uh, for a little bit, and I think I would like to maybe do Friday at some point, but right now it's, it's going to have to be Sundays in the wee hours. So, yeah, check back in, man. I'd love to chat it up with you a bit more. Okay. Um, what else can we do to this thing before we're done? I think I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup here and there. Again, this isn't a final. I'm thinking that eventually I'll probably do a final version of this thing. Cleaned up. Maybe with a cleaner, cleaner line quality. Um, so this is sort of just finding it, 
This is sort of just concepting and finding it as I go and making some decisions. And I think eventually I'll, uh, I'll do it with a clean line, um, maybe a Prismacolor or like a Micron pen or something like that, or maybe like a Prismacolor black. I love, I love to go down with Prismacolor black. Just cleaning up a little bit here now, softening some edges, working my way around. I want some of that scruff though, so I don't want to lose all of it, but I think I have got some places here where it might be a bit heavy. Hey, thanks, man. Thanks, Apps Lab. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll chat it up some more. I'll send some postings out and Again, check out my uh, my YouTube channel, which I have some other small videos there, and and I've been starting to put the archive the streams here, because Twitch only lets you post your streams for so long, and then you have to uh, move it off. So I've been moving them over to YouTube, so you can check me out, Trey Gallagher on YouTube. You can also catch me at my website, treygallagher.com. You can check me out on Instagram at Trey Gallagher. And you can check me out at, at Trey Gallagher on Instagram, Trey Gallagher on Twitter, <laughs> and Art by Trey Gallagher on Facebook. Um, so you can, any one of those places would be good. Cool. Cool, man. Great. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm trying to find some folks out there that are interested, and I appreciate it. All right. Well, I'm thinking here about turning this one in. Maybe calling this one done. We're at about the two hour mark here. So I think we're about done for this this time around. Fix a few of these little guys. get a little bit of a tip on here and dig in just a little snidge. So I'm getting this kind of nice combo of graphite and, and these warm grays kind of merging together. I'm going with my 10% here a little bit. I think the belly's going to probably be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to figure that. A little 
little contrast. Is it too much, too close to reality? It's no fun to be too close to reality. We want to, if I got a little. We could try a little colored pencil in here. to bring out a little Again, um, I'm using a little bit of color here for contrast and f focus, but I'm, I don't know that the orange is what I'm going for. In fact, I would probably say the orange is not what I'm going to go for. So taking this thing into Photoshop, I would probably um, colorize this thing and, and flip it and make it some other color scheme. Probably not... Um, orange. I'd probably go something else. Not that I love orange, <laughs> but I think that that's maybe a little too close to like tiger and because I'm trying to go for something maybe a little alien or a little different, I might go for go for a different color. But I think, you know, originally I thought about something gray, grayish blue. That kind of thing. A little gray, gray, blue. Maybe violet, but I don't know. I think it's a little too magical. Depending on which violet, though. Okay, I think... I think I might need a little something darker for this nose. So I'm going to come in here with a little bit of some Prismacolor Black to, to define these nostrils just a little bit. I think this just needs a little bit of contrast in a few places. Mostly just the forms, though. I'm not interested in coloring yet, just dimension.
So little bits of edge right that's I kind of wonder if twitch will get um, gets get a tab going because there's starting to be you know a lot of people out that are that are using it um, and it would make sense that with enough people following it, but I think just the majority are gamers, right? So it's, it's not. They just haven't done it yet, but you know, they're teamed up with, they're owned by Amazon Prime now. So, you know, I think if more people are broadcasting and doing different kinds of things with broadcasting and streaming that Maybe they will, you know? Yeah, I agree. But it's okay. I mean, for now, it's fine. Just dropping in little bits of contrast to emphasize overlap, dimension. Again, probably going to do um, a more fully realized version of this next. But tonight was just sort of finding it, and I think I'm onto something here, at least for now. At least for this version. <laughs> Let's see other little bits. This is just like little spots now for contrast. Just just little bits. Just to make some something pop a little bit more. Maybe a few of these tufts of hair kinda pop out. A little bit of silhouette. Little bits of dimension. Those little edges with just the right contrast really makes a difference in, in how things can pop out. So I think a little bit of this just in a few specific places makes the eye feel like there's more information there maybe than there really is. But Sure. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, maybe I'll try it one of these times. You know, I haven't really done any suggestions at this point. But that that's actually a great idea. I think if I had enough people on here that I knew wanted something, I would try that. <laughs> I get people that drop in, but then, you know, they're gone and they're not regulars, so... But yeah, maybe I'd try that. I'll look into that. I'll think about that. I think when I finish this one, I'll be looking to um, this kind of design. I think I'm going to do one more, maybe one more feature on this 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 concept. Because I've been spending um, a couple episodes now, three episodes, on just kind of showing process for getting this concept going. So I think maybe when this one's done, then I'll be looking for something new. Maybe I'll try, you know, just randomly. 
trying something like that. It's a good idea. Thanks. See, it's like a little bit of contrast right behind this tooth just makes it kind of pop. I don't want them sticking out too much, but gives it a little bit. Kind of strengthening his silhouette here. about bedtime for this guy there is things to be to get done tomorrow I got a young one and he will be up early <laughs> and I'm gonna be like no sleep a little longer let dad sleep a little bit longer Use a little bit of a jelly here, um, and you need just a little titch of white. These jellies can be great. Just wanted to emphasize a little bit more of the Get a few of these. Um, well, you know, I think the hardest thing about starting a project, um, it depends if you're working for yourself. I think that's one thing you can kind of take your time and feel it out. And these things that I'm doing here are just feeling it out for myself, just exploring, just having fun. But if you're working for client or if you're working under deadlines, you have to produce and you have to produce quickly and there's not a lot of time. So you have to have some, some techniques that get you something going quickly. So this is, you know, in the design world, this is what we call process. Um, process is sort of the thing you go to where the machine clicks on and you do a series of things which you know are going to get you some results and get things working. And you can, there's all kinds of techniques for getting projects going and brainstorming and getting ideas going. Sometimes they're just as simple as like you were talking about in your sketchbook. Um, 
that that can just be doodling. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're feeling inspired, it's like whatever's going to get some ideas going. Sometimes people do silhouettes and silhouette studies, and sometimes people try to extract things from abstract concepts or abstract ideas. Um, so anything that gets the, gets the ball rolling. Um, this one, I don't always do such a detail level. You know, I don't always, with everything I'm doing, go back and do a skeletal study. By the way, just checking back, see, right? I don't always do the skeletal study first. But in this case, because I had an idea for something I wanted to do and I knew I wanted to go something cat-like, kind of looking at feline bones and doing the big cats like this, I, I had to learn a little bit because I knew I wanted to be in that game. So that, that kind of inspired me and then gave me um, more information so that as I proceeded to this stage, I knew more about what I was doing. Otherwise, unless you draw cats all the time, you know, you're going to get it wrong. <laughs> um, and there's room for flexibility there a little bit um, for just ideas and your creations. But at the same time, certain parts of anatomy work the way that they work because that's how physics works. That's how gravity works. That's how skeletal systems work. So you got to sometimes familiarize yourself a little bit with what you're doing. And not all design requires inventing everything from the ground up. In fact, a lot of design borrows from existing designs. In fact, that's the sort of one criticism about today's design world, is that everybody's not really inventing anything new. They're just reinventing and rehashing everything that's been done before. But there's also that idea that if you invent something new and no one can relate to it, they aren't drawn to it. Part of what makes people drawn to something is there's something kind of familiar about it that they can go, oh, well, it's sort of like a cat, but different, better, unusual. So sometimes you start with a little bit of an existing idea and do a takeoff. And sometimes you try to go for something completely brand new. If you're working for a client, like for me, a lot of times the client has an idea of what they want. So that immediately helps me separate what I don't have to spend time investigating. I don't have to spend time trying to figure out what they want if they can tell me a little bit about where they want to get started. And that, that helps. Um, but like this one was for me and I knew I wanted to, I, being the client this time, I wanted to do a cat, something feline-like, but also creature-like and maybe a little bit not like a a cat. I don't know if that makes sense. I think the hardest part about working for somebody else, you know, usually clients that are doing this kind of stuff or want this kind of work, if it's for things like gaming or, you know, major companies that are looking to develop IP. If they're really serious about it, they have a lot of research time that goes in that they build into it. But if they're not and they're looking for something quick, then yeah, you got to come up with ideas fast. And there's a lot of, a lot of ways to sort of come up with ideas, techniques for random, randomizing and, and get something going. I think one of the things you do have to do, and this is what I try to tell my students, is that you don't have to see it in your head completely to get started. A lot of people, when they set out to draw, they want to they wanna see it completely, and then they start to draw, and they think, I can't start drawing until I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, and, and, and drawing ideas from some pre-existing thing that's in your head. But I think that uh, that's actually not how good design works. Good design works where you sort of experiment, play around with stuff until you find something that, that looks interesting. And then you work with it. You turn over the rocks, you try things, you experiment, and then you try this and you try that. And then you do another version that try this and try that until you kind of come up with something that you think really does hold up. And if you don't experiment and make mistakes and try things, you're never 
you are never never going to know that your idea was the best possible idea you have to kind of fail and try things that don't work to know the ones that do work so a lot of times I tell people when I'm having students do exercises I have them just <laughs> start drawing things that are immediately in their head at the moment or drawing things that are kind of related from real life and just doing studies and then somewhere along there your brain wants to go okay well what if I tried this and what if I tried that and then you're into the new territory then you're into the stuff where you're finding variations and experimentations where you're exploring I think that's part of the job of an artist is to kind of explore and you can't explore if you have all the answers when you start <laughs> Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Like I said, not every time does it require doing this kind of level of, of study, but this time I wanted to take the time to get something inspired that would seem more possible, more plausible. Sometimes, sometimes you just go a little bit quicker, or if it's something I've drawn a lot, a lot of or if it's a creature that doesn't have to have make as much sense um, you can just kind of start or find some random shapes and turn it into something but if you want something that seems believable it's got to come from a place where real life does something like that real life does something similar that you're like okay that's what makes it believable is that there is something from life that does something similar to that is there this kind of a cat somewhere probably not but are there some traits about this cat that really do exist yeah definitely so then your brain goes all right so then i could imagine this i could kind of see that happening I think that's what makes good designs. It has to make people see kind of kind of go that 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 seems almost possible. <laughs> Cuz I think just random ideas just completely out of nowhere that make no sense don't seem possible or completely random have no logic to them. They can they can just seem kind of just too out there and the cool thing is is that there is so much real life amazing stuff that that is weird enough from real life that you don't have to be <laughs> you don't have to play uh play god or creator and create something brand new i mean there is so much interesting stuff i mean just look at the stuff under the water right like the stuff in the oceans and it's like, man, that is crazy. If that doesn't get your ideas going just by looking at the weird shit that is under the ocean. I think, man, I could never come up with something <laughs> more crazy than some of the stuff that they actually find under the ocean. Well, that that seems pretty good. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of what I was after. I mean, I figured something either one, not prehistoric, because, you know, I've seen versions of, like, the saber-toothed tiger, and people do a lot of the saber-toothed tiger, and it's pretty amazing, you know. But I thought, you know, I don't... There's certain traits. I kind of like wolves. I kind of like the cat. There's like a little bit of hyena, maybe, the kind of scruffy hair, the sort of, you know, um, survival animal that is a bit of a stalker, is kind of intelligent, survival.
and again, I start playing with some colors and suddenly it may not feel so familiar if, if the color spectrum sort of changes here a little bit. I might, might take it into another realm just by pushing the spectrum around a little bit. All right, man. Well, yeah, I think I'm going to call this one. Um, I am going to go ahead and... Uh, sign this one and get my ass to bed thanks for uh, hanging out with me tonight half slab good getting to know you and uh, I hope I check in with you again when you, uh, if we can meet up again another week or so. Check me out. I should be back out here with any luck. And I'd like to hear how your drawings are going. If, uh, again, for anybody out there that may be watching this that's not Half Slab, my buddy Half Slab here from Kansas City. If anybody is uh, interested in finding out more about my work, you can check me out here on Twitch. You can check me out on YouTube um, at Trey Gallagher. You can check me out at Instagram, Trey Gallagher, and Twitter, same. And then Art by Trey Gallagher on Facebook. And of course, the website, TreyGallagher.com. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I think next episode, I'm going to probably go back to my design of my head and make some final corrections um, bring it a little bit more in alignment with um, what I ended up here because I think I like what I've got going here and I want to complete this to look a little bit more final presentation maybe I'll do more of a final drawing of this um, cleanup version of this or maybe a little bit of color or work a little bit of the, the pattern in there a little bit more so but look for this guy um, showing up again thanks for hanging out with me and uh, I'll check you guys next time half slab take it easy man I'll catch you next time good night everybody <laughs>